it's moving really, really fast. It's moving beyond anybody's comprehension of how things are happening. So firstly, exponentialists, we talk about in markets, you know, we're just in the start of the banana zone that works for crypto, it works for technology. So overall, the portfolio is in a kind of set it and forget it phase where it should start to really perform well. Um, we'll see how that plays out uh, over the next two, three months. I think we should be, it should be a very strong period because liquidity is on tap, the Chinese are printing money, um, and the central banks are cutting rates. Most of them should uh, join in. So we should get in exactly the picture that we've been looking for. Time is running out, and according to macro investor and Real Vision founder Raoul Pal, we only have six years before the world sees a massive transformation. In Powell's view, we're already in the so-called banana zone, a phase where crypto prices are skyrocketing. This surge is happening because central banks, following the 2008 banking crisis, agreed to print more money to keep economies afloat. Sure, it stopped financial collapse, but at the same time, it's devaluing traditional currencies. As fiat currencies lose value, Powell says we'll see multiple waves of these banana zones as crypto adjusts to the shifting worth of money. But Powell's not just focused on the short term. He believes something even bigger is coming, the exponential age of technology. With game-changing tools like Google's Notebook LM and ChatGPT, Powell argues that the market will be disrupted in ways we've never seen before. These advancements could make today's investment strategies look outdated. And we might have to completely rethink how we approach wealth, technology, and the future of finance. Buckle up. Make sure to watch to the rest of this video where Raoul Powell talks about the future of crypto and technology, why it's a race against time, and why there is a small window of opportunity open before everything changes. Also, if you enjoy listening to crypto-related content, please show your support by liking and subscribing to this channel by following the link in my bio. And get access to my free daily crypto updates and expert predictions direct to your inbox. Each newsletter contains market intelligence, on-chain data and latest updates from experts in the crypto space. All of this is available completely free of charge. Signing up only takes a moment and you can always change your mind later on. Now back over to Raoul Pal. Now I think you've learned by now, I like to mix it up between the macro and the crypto, but the technology is the thing that is really blowing my mind. It's capturing more of my attention. The crypto thing, sure, we've got our bets on. There's not a great deal to do. The macro, well, that doesn't change a lot. You know, we wait over time for the business cycle to develop to look for the great opportunities. And we're in that macro summer transitioning to macro fall that will take us for the next 18 months. So there's pretty much nothing to do for the time being. Let the bets play out. Let the banana zone begin. But in the technology side, there is literally a shit ton going on. There is more things going on than any of us can comprehend. And this is what I've talked about at the exponential age. I've said we've only got six years, I think, to kind of sort our shit out, make as much money as we can before the world changes so much that we can't truly even understand it anymore. We don't even know what business models apply, what work we do. Now, I'm not saying in six years' time everything has changed. What I'm saying is in six years' time, things will be changing so fast that it'll really create an uncertainty. I think it's even now hard to even build businesses. We've kind of got financial markets to ourselves for the time being, but before long, we have to share it with AGI. And the opportunity set changes yet again, and we figure out new ways of doing things. You see, I think a lot about AI. I think about a lot about AI and what it means, robotics. We've just seen the whole Tesla event and where robotics are going. Now, again, Elon may have used uh, people behind the scenes controlling the robots, but the point was is to set your imagination what the world is going to be like. Now, it shouldn't have taken your attention away that essentially the, 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 the guides to the theme park of that Tesla were the Optimus robots, the bar people, the Optimus robots. And that tells us the scale of disruption that is coming. And then there was the robots that drive you around. The robots that deliver you from A to B. And if you walk around in the streets around you, you'll see that in any city, most of the people in a car are getting paid to drive you there. Whether it's a taxi driver, a bus driver, a delivery driver, um, a truck driver. All of these people are seeing their future change in front of their eyes. 
the tools that we use are changing so fast, it's hard for us to keep up with it. That's the uh, DNA of my thinking. Everything that I, I do starts there. That's the most important thinking, uh, the, the kind of deepest analysis that's been going 20 years or so. But out of that, um, I asked David Mattin, who writes with me there, you see him on Real Vision a lot, to come and help me just develop this into a separate, more affordable research service called The Exponentialist, which has really helped you navigate these extraordinary technological times. And it's not only, hey, this is what the technologies are coming and this is how they're all going to fit together. This is how we can invest in it. We've got a portfolio that's done very well, but it's not about that either. It's about what it means for you and I, how we can leverage this new world, how we can not feel left behind. Basically, we not only need to invest in our demise, which is what we've got six years to do, but also we need to stay on top of the competition. And the competition is superpowering itself by using these tools. There are many of these things that keep coming out that really kind of 10x our productivity and our way of navigating the world. The hard thing is actually just staying on top of the trends. I mean, I feel like I've left behind. I can't use the kind of agent side of stuff. I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to get it to build websites for me, but other people are getting it to build websites. I've seen things like Replit, which is based on these AI tools for coding. People from a few prompts building entire websites, landing pages, all of that stuff. It can generate, obviously, all of the code that you need for building stuff, but it can do so many things. I mean, I was in Northern Zambia in the North Luangwa River, middle of fucking nowhere. I mean, I don't think there's probably, I don't know, maybe a hundred photographs of that area ever. And I take a photograph of a bend in the river, put it on ChatGPT4 and said, where's this? It goes, well, looking at the fauna and flora, it's either northern Zambezi or northern Luangwa. Uh, my guess, based on the information I can see, it's probably northern Luangwa. I mean, really? That That's mind-blowing. I took a yeah, you know, I take a picture of anything on it and just ask it what it is and how it works and everything else. You know, in the supermarket, what are the ingredients? You can. Um, I was watching 2001: A Space Odyssey on the weekend, and I just took a picture of the screen of the, you know, from from where I was sitting on the sofa, and said, "What film is this?" Less than one second, it answers the question. Oh, it's 2001: A Space Odyssey, and this is the scene. Now, weirdly, some people when they do the same prompt, um, aren't allowed to ask that question. So there's some variability in how you get that. And that's one of the things that I'm seeing a lot of is, is there is a methodology for prompting it if you're trying to get a lot out of it. But if you're trying to have the conversations that I'm trying to have on, um, yeah, I was just showing you earlier about subject matter, it'll do pretty much everything. But when you're trying to push it a bit further to do things, it has the capabilities, but it, it's often put within constraints. And that's been part of an interesting thought process that I've been going through. Is, as you know, I've been talking about, you know, are these models actually alive? Um, and there's a whole group of people who think they're sentient. And I talked about that guy, Joshua Back, and I urge you to watch those interviews. I dropped it in the chat of the previous session with David and I, where you might be able to, to go through and, and understand what is the difference between living machines and living creatures and the answer is is we don't know we don't know what living or alive or sentient or conscious or any of these topics actually mean thanks for watching